How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we are gonna be learning how to make this really cool animation with geometry nodes. Today's video is sponsored by Concierge Render by Coreweave. So I've been using Concierge Render for maybe two years now and I've never needed to use a different render farm. Love these guys, love this render farm. So at the end of the video, we are gonna be using Concierge to render out our project. So with that being said, let's get into Blender 3.0. Blender 3.0 is now out for those of you watching. Um, currently within the week this, is, this was released, Blender 3.0 is now officially out, so make sure you are in the latest version of Blender. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go and get our uh, cylinder, RX90 here, and I'm gonna hit S, Y, 8, just like that. So here I'm gonna hit Tab, and then I'm gonna go ahead and delete this face. Well, I'm gonna click that face, hold down Shift, click this face, make sure you click this little bit button up here to click faces. Now I'm gonna hit X and click faces. So while we're here in the uh, edit mode, hit A to select everything. And we're gonna go ahead and subdivide this really quick. So I'm gonna hit the loop cut, click on the loop cut, bring up this dialogue, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring this all the way up here till these faces here are square. So bring it in, looks like for me, it's gonna be around 77. So now we have this here we have a pretty cool scene. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and subdivide and make this smooth. So now we have a really nicely subdivided, very evenly subdivided cylinder. Now we can go and dive into geometry nodes. So here we're gonna go click on geometry nodes and I'm gonna delete this window. We won't need it. And I'm going to click new. So within the geometry nodes uh, workspace here, I'm gonna hit shift A and type in delete we'll see delete geometry and we'll plug it right there and that'll delete everything. So what we need to do is get a texture to tell it where to delete our geometry. So let's go ahead, shift A, and I'm gonna get a noise texture, but there are quite a few textures to pick from. So if you hit shift A and scroll down here to texture, these are all of our options. So we are going to need a color ramp as well to further edit this texture. So let's plug our color into the selection and we'll plug our factor into the color ramp. And if we bring this color ramp in, let's see which one, the black portion, now our geometry comes back. So we'll play with my scale a little bit here so we get a nice selection on where we want our geometry to kind of show up on this full scene. It's very twirly, very swirly here. So play with that, bring this up, bring this down, however you like, but we have this so far. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a solidify, bring that thickness up just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and get in a bevel, bring our mount just a little bit and then bring that the segments in, right click and shade smooth. Now we have this. So what I'm gonna do now is hit shift D and duplicate this whole thing. And then make sure that we go here in the modifiers and click geometry nodes. Right here we see a two. I'm going to uncheck that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take off my solidify, and take off my bevel. And then here on the color ramp, I'm actually gonna go ahead and flip the color ramp. So now it's kind of inverted, it's in those spots that it wasn't. And then if we go here to the wireframe view, we can see we have nice grids. So I'm just gonna go ahead and simply throw a wireframe modifier on this section. I'm gonna click boundary. And then I'm gonna go here, shade flat, so we can kind of see everything accurately, just like that. So we can even go ahead, add a bevel modifier to this. And we'll get a really nice looking grid. So let's we'll see this. That is how the bevel modifier affects our wireframe. Looks really nice, looks a little bit more hard surface, very basic kind of hard surface look here with our scene. Last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this again. And then I'm gonna go ahead here on the bevel and turn it off. And then on this as well, turn off my bevel because it's making my scene really heavy. We'll turn that back on later. So we'll go back here to geometry nodes here, click that on that geometry nodes in the modifiers. And I'm click that two again, and I'm gonna bring it far less on the geometry and then bring that scale up something like, bring that scale up pretty high and then we'll play with our noise texture 
and then on 3D we'll go to 4D so that with this W we can actually animate it. So that we're going to go ahead and bring the thickness down on the wireframe. So you can see that happening right here. And then here in the uh, transform, I'm going to click and drag. And we're just going to go ahead and scale this in until these come through to these. So it looks like it's not quite done yet. Right there. Cool. OK, so we can bring that scale up and then bring that geometry down. So if we play with this W, looks really cool. Almost looks like it's spiraling, but it's not. OK. Now I'm going to go back and turn my bevel back on. And um, we're going to go ahead and start shading this. Right about now is a good time to save. So I'm just going to call this Tut and save that to my desktop. We're going to go back here to Layout. I'm going to hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key for me. I'm going to click Front, Shift A, add the camera. And then holding down Control, I'm going to hold it down until we get to the back of our scene. So it snaps to the back. And then click on the camera, make it a little bit wider. We really want it to be nice and wide. Then I'm going to hit G and use my mouse to kind of move it around and hit R twice to kind of play with it to look like that. All right, now let's go ahead, get our world brightness, bring it all the way down to black, shift A, get in a light, get that point light. And then I'm going to hit G to move my point light back here, give it a power of 1000. And then in the transform, I'm going to bring it back here. And I'm going to hit Shift D and move one up there. So that's our lighting for now. We're going to go ahead and click on shading again. Hit the zero, click on the render. And then here on object, we're going to go here to world. I'm going to hit the period key to move that here. Search up VOL principled volume, and then we'll plug this into the volume like that and give my density 0 0.3. Actually, 0 0.03. Okay, now let's make our point lights the color that we want them to be. So we're going to go with a blue, orange, possibly. And now let's start shading this. So we'll go from world to object. Click on here. Click new. Go ahead and delete that. Let's make this metallic, make the base color pretty dark, and let's play with roughness. So we're going to make a material I've made a couple times here on the channel. We're going to get our color ramp here. So let's plug the color into the roughness, and let's get a noise texture. I'm going to hit Control T. Make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. That comes with Blender by default. Just go ahead and enable it in the add-ons uh, menu. And then we're going to use the object coordinate, plug the noise texture into the color ramp. I'm going to crunch this in this way, crunch this in this way, bring my detail to 12, my roughness all the way up. And then here on the black, let's bring it up just a little bit so it's not, not quite so reflective. So that's how we're looking for this material. Maybe bring this from white to a little bit farther down. Now let's make a second texture. So all this fun stuff, I'm hit G and move it over. And then I'm going to go ahead and get a Voronoi texture. Plug the color into the vector. Let's get another color ramp. And we'll plug the color into the color ramp. And we'll replace this in the roughness. So now we have this. Let's go ahead and crunch this in a little bit, crunch this in a little bit. And now let's mix these two together with a mix RGB. So plug that there. We'll get this actually into the color two. Plug the color ramp into color one. And then let's bring it all the way to the noise texture and just bring, a, bring it in just enough so we get that pattern. In fact, let's go here to Manhattan on the pattern. And then bring that scale up a little bit. Now, let's bring that factor in. We have a pretty cool material working for us now. And then let's go ahead and apply that same material to this wireframe here. Here in this material, we're going to click New. I'm going to go ahead and delete the principled, give it an emission material, and plug that into the surface, make it orange, and make it really bright. 
So now we need to go ahead and turn on our EV settings. So click on the camera icon and then on these, just check all these here on screen space reflections, uncheck half res, bring up that trace precision. And now we have something pretty cool. We're gonna go ahead and bring this down a little bit and make that really bright. And now we have our scene having that camera icon clicked. Let's go down here to color management and go from look to high contrast. All right, so now we can start instancing this thing around. So let's go back here to layout and then let's go and highlight this right here. I'm gonna hit M to add it to a collection, new collection. I'm going to call it loop, just like that. Shift A, collection instance, click on loop. And I'm gonna hold control and bring it over. Now you're wanting, you're wanting to hold down control so it snaps and you want it to just barely touch the edge right there. And then I'm gonna hit Alt D, holding down control, make that end just touch it. You wanna make sure they're touching just like that. This is gonna ensure a seamless loop. All right, so now it looks like this here in the render. I'm gonna click on point light number one, click on this one, and then I'm gonna hold down control, click on the camera, control P, click object, that's gonna parent it to that object. So here on the camera, we are at negative eight. Make sure you are at negative eight. In your preferences here on the animation, make sure your default interpolation is linear. So I'm gonna bring up my timeline a little bit, go back to frame zero, click on my camera, and then here on frame eight, I mean negative eight, click that. We'll go all the way to frame 250 and type in positive eight. And that's gonna make a seamless loop. You can notice nothing really changed, but if you press play, it actually did change quite a bit. Let's go ahead and animate these little blinking things here. I'm gonna hit the drop down arrow and here on the point light, not a big fan of this color combination. So we're gonna go here with this and then on the other point light, let's make it less of a dramatic blue. Click on this now, go here to the colors. I'm gonna make it a nice kind of interesting red. That looks a little better, I like that. All right, now let's go here to geometry nodes and then make sure we are in, clicking on the right object. So I'm just clicking the eyeball to make sure that's working correctly. And then here on 4D, let's go ahead and animate that W. So I'm gonna bring this down, wait till you see a plus icon to drag up, click here and go here to the timeline. So now we're just gonna do a very hacky <laughs> loop. So I'm gonna bring my scale to maybe five, bring that color ramp in like this so we don't get quite as many. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hover over the W, hit I. Go over here, hovering over there, hit I again. And then right here in the middle, so I think it's 125, I'm gonna hold down Shift and just animate it a little bit so it moves. So move that over, and then I'm gonna hit I again. So now we have this moving around in geometry nodes, it's really exciting. This process of kind of deleting geometry used to be far more difficult. And then one thing I do wanna add is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on this right here. I'm gonna hit Alt D, just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag and just move this guy out, just like that. So now we have this much bigger piece. So when we press play, you're gonna get kind of this parallax looking effect in the scene, which looks way cooler than it originally did. So that's a fun little hacky thing to do in this animation. But now we're done. This is the animation. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my file, name it whatever I want, and we're gonna jump into Concierge Render, which is linked in the description. If you follow along if you want, I'm gonna show you how to use their render farm. So we're here in Concierge Render. I'm gonna go ahead and get here in the Upload Launch Renders. I'm gonna go ahead and click Upload Files and find the tut right there. So now it's gonna go ahead and upload my file to your file database. So here is tut, actions, we'll go here and click Launch Render. Once it's done analyzing, we're gonna go and look here and just do some double checking. It is Blender 3.0, we are rendering an EV, it is an animation, that is all we need to see and look at here. And you can go ahead and select your frames if you want the particular resolution if you want to change it or you can just use native and we do want to use our camera to render. 
So let's go ahead and click the render button. And now that is gonna go ahead and render out all of our frames. I'm gonna to go to the job manager to watch it. Click on this one right here. And now we're just gonna go ahead and wait. All right, and now we're done rendering here. The final cost was almost a dollar. Now this, in the grand scheme of things, was a really, really small project. That's why it only took about four seconds for a per frame. Total cost was really low. Um, concierge is incredible for really, really big scenes, especially using cycles. So this is a really small project, but that cost will obviously go up with the bigger scenes. But this is concierge render. And then what you'll do is you'll go ahead and download your outputs. It's gonna give you a PNG sequence. Go ahead and compile that PNG sequence, whether in Blender or Premiere Pro, anything like that you want. Um, but there you go. That is how you do this animation using Concierge Render. Thank you, Concierge Render, for sponsoring the channel and allowing me to keep doing this. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.